Hi, how are you doing? As a hair loss sufferer and as a hair loss sufferer researching a hair transplant, it is impossible today not to come across these four statements. These four wild statements. Statements which put the cart before the horse. Get a hair transplant done before it's too late. Get it done once, get it done well. A hair transplant is permanent. You don't have to take medicines when you get a hair transplant done with us. And finally, at our clinic, we accept all kinds of cases for hair transplant. I never reject a case of hair transplant because we love challenging cases. Well, these are marketing strategies, nothing else. None of these five statements are completely truthful as we are going to discuss in this video. When a clinic or a doctor or a clinic run by technicians prioritizes expediency, commercial interests over scientific correctness, over patient safety, over patient well-being, it is a recipe for disaster. And now we are going to discuss all these tall claims one by one. Get a hair transplant done before it is too late. It can never be too late for a hair transplant. If it is too late for a hair transplant, that means that your donor area is unstable. If your donor area was unstable after five years and you cannot do a hair transplant anymore, if it was done early at a tender age, what this tall statement hints at, the hair which were moved from the donor area to the recipient area will also fall off. And this happens very commonly in diffuse pattern alopecia. A hair transplant is not a salon procedure. Every patient is not fit for a hair transplant. You need, the doctor you choose needs to carefully assess your suitability, your candidature for a hair transplant. In my clinic, out of 10 people who walk into my clinic, only about three or four people will be fit for a hair transplant. And this is true for most clinics which are doing ethical work around the world. The second tall statement, which may be partly true, but most of it is a tall claim. Get it done once, get it done well. This statement wants you to wear blinkers and not realize the fact that baldness is ever progressing. It's a dynamic process. Hair transplant is not a cure for baldness. Hair transplant does not stop the progression of baldness in any way. Both are interrelated. Hair transplant merely covers the bald areas that are present at a given time and as baldness progresses, even if you are taking medications, you are likely to need future procedures. Well, that is the truth. The third statement that confounds me is that hair transplants are permanent. Well, nothing in this body is permanent, least of all hair transplants. With time, the body changes. Every tissue, every organ in the body deteriorates with age. Besides that, even the donor area is affected by the hormone DHT, though it may be to a much lesser extent than on the top of the head or in the front of the head. And that is the reason why your donor area progressively becomes thinner even when you do not have the baldness gene. Donor areas are only relatively permanent, not fully permanent. In my clinic, you do not need medication after a hair transplant. What a tall claim. Your biological processes, the effect of your genetics will remain the same whichever clinic you go to. It is not that clinic A gives you finasteride after the procedure, whereas clinic B openly states that finasteride is not required after a hair transplant. There cannot be a more expedient statement by a clinic than to say that a hair transplant by itself is the treatment of baldness. Yes, there are instances like traction alopecia, hair transplant in patients who have passed middle age and whose baldness is stable. In these cases, we can omit finasteride, but never in those in which baldness is progressive. It is like a jungle on fire. When a jungle is on fire, don't go around planting more trees. They will all be consumed by the same fire. You extinguish the fire and once it is extinguished, you go about planting trees. Hair transplant in the presence of aggressive baldness, aggressive progression of baldness has to be approached very carefully or else you will burn all your bridges. There will be no going back. And then there are certain claims like we do bloodless surgery. We do scarless surgery. These are all misleading statements. So before you go for a hair transplant, there are certain important things that you need to know. A hair transplant should never be done in a young person whose baldness is still progressing, whose baldness has not achieved some semblance of stability. A hair transplant should not be done in old age if a patient, if a patient has uncontrolled diabetes, if a patient is on blood thinners, 
significant heart conditions in which blood thinners cannot be stopped and other autoimmune disorders in which hair transplants should not be done. If a person above 60 is healthy, he has a good donor area and he has realistic expectations, hair transplant is not a contraindication. Well, in my clinic, the oldest person I have done a hair transplant on is a person, a scientist from Germany who was 88 years old, who had one arm blown off while working in his laboratory. Even at 88, you might want to look the best, the best you can, the best version of yourself. Life doesn't come to an end. Age is just a number. As long as you are healthy, you have the requisite donor and your expectations are real. Age is not a contraindication for hair transplant. Sometimes a patient comes to me that my baldness is stable, it has not progressed. But if you do not have a donor area, what is the doctor going to do? How can a doctor do a hair transplant in an extensively bald patient when there is no scalp donor? Well, you might say that I have body hair, but then body hair in isolation will look pretty weird. Body hair characteristics are pretty different from scalp hair characteristics. Unless body hair is mixed with scalp hair in 1 is to 4 ratio, it will not look natural. It will stick out like a sore thumb. One must realize that hair loss has a profound impact on your psychological well-being. A hair transplant should not be proceeded with unless due time has been given in counseling the patient, in realizing what his goals and objectives are, in preparing him for a hair transplant. Because if we do not reset his expectations, which might be unrealistic, we are preparing the ground for dissatisfaction and regret. So never do hair transplant in a hurry. Clinics will try to lure you with discounts, telling you that a hair transplant, if not done at this moment, you might lose all your donor hair. Well, these are statements born out of expediency, not keeping your interests in mind. And since very few doctors do hair transplant today, and therefore medical ethics cease to apply to them, you have to do your research yourself. Take your time. Do not hurry. Do not fall for seasonal discounts. Do not get pressurized into a hair transplant. A hair transplant is not a salon procedure. The first hair transplant, if done wrong, will require many procedures to set it right. If you understand what I told you today, and if you keep these points in mind while you do your while search, you, while you choose the clinic best suited for your hair transplant, Keeping these points in mind, I am sure you will not regret a hair transplant. A hair transplant done appropriately, done skillfully, done in the right person is the best thing that would have ever happened to you in your life. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, any doubts in your mind about what we discussed, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll be there to help you. I generally reply back in two days. Have a good day. God bless you.